All right, folks, uh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to uh, the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships here at Bob Dean's Field in Ototahi Christchurch. My name is Blair Munro. And I'm Kelsey Bielek. And we are here to talk you through, to be your eyes and ears on the ground, to provide context and commentary between this open division matchup between Cog from Christchurch playing out of the Credo Green kit on the right-hand side of your screen and Trail Mix from Canberra in Australia. Um... It's, nope. gonna be <laughs> it's an exciting matchup, as Blair is saying. Really privileged and really stoked to have uh, our, our friends, our colleagues, our neighbours over here from the Western Island, Australia itself, coming over to play in the Div 2 National Championships. Also, a, a commentary on weather. You know, while these Aussies, they're over here, they're stoked to play. It's probably a little bit colder than what they're used to over across the pond. It's it's getting to be a warmer and sunnier day. It's, it's definitely warming up. It was, a, it was a cold three degrees this morning, though. So the dew is... is is evaporating, the sun's coming up, it's warming up, also it's really calm conditions. So really beautiful day to be playing Ultimate. And meanwhile, Credo on the right side of your screen um, in blue, they're gonna be starting off on defense with the pull. They're, they're gonna be defending this home turf. This is where they train, where they play. Coming out on defense, what do they have in store? It's Aaron Whitehead with the desk to pull. So a, a massy alarm wearing the, uh, the famed uh, rainbow colored helicopter hat, first made famous uh, by Jonas Holman as he puts the big shot up. Will it help him take to the skies this game? Oh, oh it absolutely will. Some nice early give go as we see a side stack establishing, looking for a deep shot early. Whitehead gonna show us if that hat helps out. It helps him with positioning, that's for sure. Search and destroy by Aaron Whitehead, but the reset gets run through by Millard Cartwright. And that is an exciting and spicy defensive play. You know, we chatted with Trail Mix before the game. They're really stoked to be here, but also of note, it's a relatively small roster. You know, that's riddled not just with the expense. Oh, what a release. Irish with the around air bounce looking for Calvert. Oh, Calvert, my, my apologies. What a great find to put the score on the board there. Trail Mix up by one. An offensive hold not perfectly clean, which is exactly um, what uh, Cog were hoping to see. Admittedly, it was a turnover generated from maybe reading and adapting to what was a called play to open the game by uh, Trail Mix. We saw that side stack set up. We had those two handlers in the downfield space work, or the upfield space, my apologies, working backwards and forwards. The remaining uh, five players were all pushed towards the far sideline to try and isolate that one player. Um, uh, in in the downfield space who they put a high shot up for and it didn't come down with it. Um, I do want to say also there's some crispy clean throws coming out from Trail Mix right off the bat. Just, just that sharp around backhand, beautiful release of note, especially with that run through D. I love the energy they're bringing to the field in this, just the first point of the game. Of note, as I was mentioning, though, the roster is quite small, and that's riddled not only with, unfortunately, a few injuries, according to the team captain, but also just the financial expense of playing ultimate, of flying to other countries, you know, to play against different opponents, different offense, really, you know, a privilege, again, to have them here, not only to to, you know, host them in this tournament, but it gives them the opportunity to play against all these different players who they, who they haven't seen different playing style, but also for uh, these players hailing from Aotearoa in New Zealand to, to play against different club teams and see those different strategies and styles as well. We have Trail Mix coming down in a zone. It looks like Cog having no issue finding those gaps, those open options. Oh, a bit too much sauce on that throw leads to a bobble and a turnover. Some great quick offense though by Cog. As we see Irish with the big hawk looking up. Aguilar not able to come down with it. And the quick overrun from Julian Bocking is going to be enough to put Trail Mix again on the board. The score now 2-0 from the side from Australia. One thing I, I really liked there, Aguilar, he's, he's a really athletic player. He he works so hard, and he's such a strong team player. He went, looks like he was going for the high five after that. And maybe, uh, you know, New Zealand is, it traditionally does really well with spirit. And um, it looks like there was a lot of stoke in celebrating that point, and that, that's all good with trail mix. Um, but really great effort on both teams' parts. Also, I just want to recognize that around throw. 
And there we go with the point. But the around throw that led to that, that low release hook, that's the second time, that's the second point that's been scored off of really the hockey assist there with that low release around hook to the break side. What a put. Absolutely. I mean, it's working for them, and so it's going to be interesting to see how Cog decide to adapt. Uh, we're going to see Trail Mix come out on defense yet again. That same small, relatively small roster. We've only got a handful of players, sort of somewhere in the 10 to 12 region, which is relatively low for a tournament of this. You'd typically expect somewhere to bring around 16 to 18 uh, strong roster. That's kind of what we're seeing from COGS. It'll be interesting to see whether or not that reduced number of legs uh, is going to be compensated for by uh, the skill that we're seeing on display Definitely. throughout the course of the tournament. Yeah, and I think also of note, though, well, you know, it's still early days. It's the beginning of the tournament. They have those legs under them. Tomorrow afternoon is when you might be seeing a bit more of that fatigue. But also when you have a small roster, you're able to have more playing time and make those connections and drill those over the course of the tournament can lead to, you know, increased connections and end comms and understanding. The disc goes deep. It's fading back in. Oh, but it's not going to be quite enough. It's going to pull uh, number 42, Eden Man, just out of bounds. Some great zone defense there by uh, Trail Mix. So we saw them form a bit of a cup around uh, the disc. So three or four players, I think it was three players, were committing to essentially forming a wall around the disc, and they would follow that disc wherever it moved. It's giving up some things, but the ambition is to try and, and cover those on the downfield side, which they were able to do. They had a defender in great position. So even though that huck went up, looked like it was curving back in towards the field, wasn't going to go. So we're seeing uh, Cog stick to a match defense. It's going to generate the turn for them. Sutherland juking. Oh, and that same, I'm, I'm loving these low release backhands. Cog responding with their own, and such an incredible release by Cartier. To Silver Bauer for the score. Now, we've seen um, Silver Bauer actually coaching um, with, I believe it was the, the Phoenix, Phoenix who we saw. Yeah, yeah the so women's team in the last game. So, some just fantastic, uh, fantastic work there, to work there to put one on the board. So, we're going to see Cog come out on defense now. They've managed to tighten the score line up a little bit. It's only a mm. one point game now. Some really early showing, a really early strong showing by Trail Mix. We'll see if they're able to keep that one up. One of the things, when you've got a lot of skill on your team, even if you have a small roster, quite often the ambition can be, let's go out strong, let's put as many points on the board as we can and win it early and give ourselves a bit more of a chance to recover. Now, Cog obviously don't want that to happen. They want to walk away with a win. So one of their focuses is going to be, in addition to just playing our own game, when we're on defense, do we want to try and, and let them have passes, let them have long points, try and grind them down, wear them out, force them to play exhausted? Um, and that, that's the point at which it becomes, you know, 4D chess because you start playing on levels just beyond throwing and catching, just mm. beyond force side and break side and just beyond zone and match defense and you start playing into the very psychological long-term elements of the game. Um, not with malicious intent, I should probably clarify, but... Um, Sutherland with the pull. And I want to comment on, all, I mean, I mentioned it. I'm just really stoked on these low-release backhand breaks that both teams are putting up. We'll see if we can see more of them this point. This disc goes up to the open side. That's Jack Reed. It's virtually unmarked players, it looks like. A lot of separation. The disc finds its way to the ground. A little bit of miscommunication on that throw, I think. Yeah. Really tried to drive along that far sideline, but maybe the downfielders weren't necessarily responsive to it. Maybe there wasn't enough edge on that just to bring it back in. So we're going to see Whitehead bring that to the far sideline, supported in the upfield space by Toby Sutherland. And we've got a lot of experience on this team. Uh, I think a wide range of abilities for COG. Players who've played like Sutherland here, looking for the center disc and he's breaking deep but he's played with the u24 team the disc is going up acknowledging that deep look from sutherland and what a great catch just outside the end zone and then he swings for the point Ooh. great work there through to nicholas fuller for the score let's break down again how that happened so there's the vertical stack sutherland made the cut up he juked back. We, we might get a replay. Juked back and then just made the deep look. Whitehead seeing his, his handling counterpart streaking back. So Sutherland trying to get open and then just streaking deep. We had a few undercuts out of the stack, but I, lo I love the, the cross field look. Great and, execution. And it's important to kind of recognize how all of this oh, was a little bit close trying to get that point through. But recognizing the strength of your team is key to making a play like that happen. So Toby Sutherland's a great handler. He's really confident in the downfield space. He also trusts someone like Aaron Whitehead who has a great arsenal of throws and a great amount of depth to his bag. So 
in that position. He tried to get free for maybe a recentering pass, kind of recognized that wasn't going to happen, and then immediately pushes it out of that handler space, which does two things. One, when he develops that into a deep cut, it creates an option for a player like Aaron Whitehead to hit him deep. And the alternative is also frees up that space for one of those players in the vertical stack in the downfield to come in and fill in as a handler and, and maybe catch the defense off guard. Just goes up, and we've got Millard Cartwright looking for options, swinging back to the middle to Irish. And Irish really showing us he's been... A great a vertical attempt, but it looks like there was some content on it, so there's going to be a foul called. Here it comes on the field. Thank and you for that, Credo. Or and, co it, cog, and it has been accepted. So, uh, so we're going to recognize that the contact that was drawn did happen, did have an impact on the play, and uh, there's complete agreement between both teams that maybe it shouldn't have happened, um, which I'm trying to... It looks like the uh, I, it'll stand as a catch. Yeah, so Trail Mix are going to retain position. It is going to be Ben Larson with the disc, hoping to close out, put another one on the board. And a lot of pivots, forced to look backwards. Is Trail Mix going to go into an end zone that they may have drilled? It looks like no. A prime example where maybe some better communication, you know, more cleaner cuts could have could have resulted in a point. It gives Cog another opportunity on offense. Whitehead right with a bit of a slip, but, I mean, helicopters don't have wheels. They do have skids, so it kind of makes sense. Pinned down in that coffin corner, manages to find Poek in the midfield space. <laughs> Pops over the top to that. Whitehead, winds up the big huck, decides to holster it, swings back to Poek. Oh, what a great Goes great around, play. but overthrows. A bit too slicey. Goes wide. I love to see that they're capitalizing, they're using, they're threatening the break side of the field, you know, showing the marks that they need to respect that break space. But, but yeah, yeah, it goes too wide. So we've got trail mix with the disc. Powell with the big forehand looking for Irish. Through the hands. And Irish really showing here his skill, not just similar to Sutherland. I love to see when handlers are are in that the handling space, but also just showing their ability to break deep. I think it's so important to remind the defender that yes, you're a formidable opponent in the in the in the handler space, but also deep. You know, you need to respect that. Yeah, I think uh, Aaron Whitehead really pushing towards that near sideline, trying to get a position, kind of recognizing that height uh, advantage that he had. Let's rip with a big hug, looking for Murphy, but it's going to fall early. Ooh, yes, it's going to be Powell with the disc, despite a little bit of a tumble from one of his teammates. Nice break throw. Threads one right through Toby Walsh. Some great Passing disc work in. here to Giles. Larson. Irish. Finding Irish. And Irish really, he's been doing such a good job again. It's good to see the mark recognizing the potential for the break, those backhand breaks that we've seen. So shifty, some of these trail mix handlers really creating a lot of openings. How did that happen? <laughs> um, I think he, well, I, I think he juked his defender into a different time zone, to be honest. Did he um, operate? Yeah, it's, it's, it's unclear. Um, but I mean, hey, you know, that's that's one of the things, right, is... is yeah, that's so that was Millard Cartwright with the catch. He was on the Australian U22 team, under 22s. Um, and now, yeah, playing with Trail Mix here, showing that he's got some magical abilities. You know, maybe he's a Hogwarts alum, manages to up oh, apparate right on the open side. So I th I think that um, maybe there, were, there was a, a cog defender who was maybe a little bit on the back foot. I think seeing that... Those couple players standing still in the, sta in the stack in the very center of the end zone, they were concerned that that was the threat that they had to keep an eye on. Maybe worried, uh, we're trying to bracket that, but didn't realize they were giving up a player in doing so. So it's going to give Trail Mix another opportunity, another point there. They'll be coming down on defense now as the score is 3-2 to the side from Canberra. Great big rip from Parsonen. And Cog picking up. So that is going to be Michael Peters with the disc. Aguilar slashing to the open side, and the disc goes Great wide to Warren. Great take by Warren there. Threading through by way of Silberbauer. Nice movement. We're hearing man shouts from the sideline. The red zone. The hammer goes up. Love to see it. Love you, to see it. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's exactly as you said in our first game when we saw Blue Skies narrowly uh, come out over the top of uh, Exiles. 
we want to see some more interesting throws. Uh, we saw some great work by Emery Crane there in that first game. And uh, you did put out the challenge, Kelsey. You said, I don't think we'll see too many more of those. So no seeing extremes. someone uncork a, a hammer to uh, what felt like a wide open receiver, you do, in fact, love to see it. And again, in the conditions like this, it, there's, there's a slight breeze now, but really not affecting, as we can see on the field, not really affecting the throws. A high release backhand, those, those bobbly high throws, hammers, no release. No, sorry, no look scoopers. That one had a little too much sauce on it. Again, in, in the wind, that still would have flown true and straight. But here in these not windy conditions, we're seeing people can get a little bit more creative. And, and the throws are going to come out, I think, regardless. Aguilar working with Warren. Great upline separation. cut. Plenty of separation from number 26. Just slightly overthrows Eden Mann for a score attempt. Hearts is broken. That, that was just such nice flow. I love the energy, the continuation, and the touch on it just carried it a little bit further. Oh, Blair. What an exciting match we're watching. <laughs> I am absolutely invested. here for it. Go on, the score is only two, three, folks. Uh, and a great score. I mean, also, it's, it's so cool to see games like this. And we've seen them, I mean, pretty consistently in the Opens division. Teams trading point for points. A really strong matchup, at least right off the bat. The disc goes to the break side. Calvert with the disc now. Looking back around. Tries for another cheeky upline. But Eden Mann is going to put enough defensive pressure to shut that one down. We have Millard Cartwright finding center field. Goes to Bocking and then continues through all the way to Vaith Levin. Nice movement right now from Trail Mix. They're, they're really using an inside out break. Now the break side of the field, but doing a really wonderful job of shifting it to the open side, really showing Credo, sorry, Cog, that they do need to respect that open side. That open side as defense, as downfield defense, stopping those open side cuts. High release backhand for a swing. Anyway, as, as we're saying, within these, these you know, light conditions where there's little to no wind, we're going to see those high releases. The inside out flick goes up. And comes down. Threading the needle that went through how many holes and hands did it sneak by? I think that went past through one player on each side to find the outstretched arms of William Millard Cartwright for the score, taking Trail Mix up by two to a 4 2 lead over the locals from COG. And that's the second point that Millard Cartwright has put up on the board. I think important to recognize, you know, so often on Ultimate Frisbee teams, you have those players that they're the, they're the scorers. They score points. Apparent here that Millard Cartwright is one of them. And important also, I think, for Cog to recognize that threat, recognize that he's consistently getting where was his, his defense, that he's going to be finding those open spaces, maybe disappearing for a moment. But as soon as you take his, your eyes off of him, he's got the invisibility cloak on, and he's going to pop right back up with a disc in his hand and an extra point on the board for, for trail mix. I mean, so that, that's, it, that's it. I think it's really interesting to notice that we've seen a couple of scores from Milan Cartwright where he functionally hasn't been defended, and it raises the question. I mean, we're seeing a timeout be called now. Have Cog noticed this? Are they recognizing that he's a huge threat specifically because he's being unmarked and what's causing him to be unmarked? Uh, what, are, what are the whys? What's the, what's the root cause of that? Are people not following him closely? Are they taking their eye off him because they don't see him as a major threat despite the fact that he's put two points on the board? So a timeout being called now. Cloak. You forgot that so I did. I did it. I did in fact forget that some people can just turn invisible. <laughs> now, I don't know about you, Kelsey, but I would have thought that would be considered unsportsmanlike. Uh. But... Um, Evidently, Cog don't have a problem with it because they haven't managed to shut him down just yet. So we're still up by two. <laughs> it's really obvious from the size of those two different huddles just how sparse the uh, ca the trail mix team is. Um, but they've they've uh, Cog have already broken from the huddle, so they're already sending seven players out to the line. We're going to see what comes out next. Trail mix uh, to come out on defense yet again. This is going to be a game to uh, fifteen. Uh, as opposed to the previous games of 13, um, just because of a slight discrepancy in the pool size at this tournament. So we're allowed to have a little bit of a longer game. We're allowing these players to stretch their legs a little. And so this is going to be a game for 15, which means that we will take a halftime break once the first team reaches eight points 
whenever that happens. And also shout out to, to a few clips in there. Uh, we've got fans, and big thank you to all the volunteers who are helping to make this event possible. Those are players who are maybe playing a Division One next weekend. We've got um, quite a few school players out here as well playing, or sorry, supporting as volunteers. And, and Michael Peters as well of COG giving us a big smile from the sideline as, as COG takes the field to start out on offense, looking to cinch back a few of the points that they that they let go to Trail Mix, who is currently ahead 4-2. to two. Again, as Blair just said, at the moment, halftime will be at 8. So a big pull there. Nice little bit of it, just going to touch and roll. Stopped by Whitehead. Two Elliots who swings it wide, forces forehand. Both teams are forcing forehand at the moment. We've seen that across the course of the day, really. A, a consistent forehand force. Some big shoulder fakes. So that was Poek who manages to find Bish. Bish Whitehead back option. as a support option. Engaging, I mean, when it's a, yeah, a face mark on the reset there, could be a handler initiated throw. Finding Whitehead. Sutherland on the near sideline, wide open, loses a couple of yards to get the disc. Now looking to work with Whitehead. We've seen that great across cut. Last time he turned it into a deep cut. This time he's maintaining his position in the handler space. We see Nicholas Fuller, no sleeves, all dreams, hoping for someone to get free. Some handler initiated throw, so Whitehead is being face marked there. Great points. Managed to, to get open, but but when you're being face marked as the handler reset, it allows the thrower to just put the disc up into space. Again, if your defender fully has their back to the disc, it's hard to understand where the disc is coming. Nonetheless, I mean, it looks like the, the thrower is a, a little bit nervous and tentative about putting that up, so so props on Whitehead for making that movement to get open, nonetheless resulting in, again, a point for Cog. Yeah, so we're going to see that again. We're going to see Whitehead dropped right behind the disc. He He's making a little bit of a circle, trying to jink around, manages to cut on the inside, getting his shoulder out the front, and then the in-motion, low-release, air-bounce backhand to the near sideline. It probably sounds a little bit like word salad, unless you've spent a lot of time uh, around an ultimate field. Uh, but we're going to get to see that again with a little bit close. So we've got Fuller looking for that option, uh, Whitehead getting the shoulder, and then it just in-motion, putting one through. What a great way to finish that point and bring them back to within one. So we're going to see Cog, Credo, Open, Green come down on defense now. And a, a really a much needed point for them. Uh, something that is really, pardon me, exciting to see as leadership. You know, when, when a timeout has been called like that, when the team is going into a timeout, when you've seeded a few points, you're talking about how to bring your heads back in the game, strategically what you're going to do. And they, they needed that point. Really, really cool to see that they discussed exactly what they needed and they executed that on the field. Coming out, giving them a chance on defense. We haven't seen again. We haven't seen much zone today. Fully expect them to come down match. Although we have seen, I mean, it wouldn't be surprising. I really do enjoy how a zone can just challenge a team to think differently. It can change things up a little bit, which can sometimes be enough to make a turnover. They're coming down match with the classic side stack that Blair mentioned before. And so, are we going to see it happen again? Yes, it looks like it's happening. The big flick hut goes up for the open receiver, but Elliot's looking to peel off. Oh, that's a that difficult catch. Uh, especially under double coverage, great awareness by uh, Elliot to recognize that peel off and provide a bit more defensive pressure. Uh, it's that number eight. It's, once again, Miller it's William Cart Miller Cartwright, Cartwright who's yeah. trying to do the work. He, uh, yeah, he. It's one of those catches where when you're fully uncovered, when you're just practicing warming up, you're going to make that catch. But again, double coverage can be all you need to make the difference. What's happening here? There's a lot of coverage. A lot of people underneath the disc. Exciting to keep it clean and a point Sam on the board. Murphy. The man, the legend, the myth, he's right here in human form. Oh, that's, I feel a little bit unfortunate. It's going to reinforce some negative stereotypes about the literacy requirements in Australia, considering just how, despite the fact that four of them were underneath the desk, it was the uh, New Zealander who had the read. Oh, <laughs> he did indeed. You know, and why join the group? He's showing here, he's not a little lemming joining the, the party. He's he's seeing what's going on. All these people coming under the desk, and I was a bit nervous there about One, injuries. One, two... And then the array, there it is. Yeah, so through. why so join the party when you have well, you have a party of your own when you score the point? Yeah, we're gonna get to see that one more time. So there, that was borderline triple coverage. We see uh, Giles, Irish, and Parson, and all underneath that. But it's Murphy who comes down with it. What a fantastic just offensive read to tie the game there. 
That is exactly what Cog needed to kind of G them up. We saw that timeout called. What did they talk about? Whatever they talked about, it's clearly working because Cog have managed to put two on the bounce. They're back on track. It's a tight game. Absolutely. Yeah, an exciting point. We're also seeing a lot of Hawks coming off. It's a different style than we've seen from the last two games, but, but both teams are really capitalizing on that deep space. And, you know, it, it's really exciting to watch Frisbee like this. It can sometimes acknowledge the other side of it, devolve into just Hawk and Run um, or, or injuries. You don't want to see too many bodies. I was really excited about that point that that it was clean. A few people jumped up, but when you're in the air, it can be a dangerous space. They kept it clean, but yeah, a lot of Hawks going up this game. It makes it really exciting to watch. Michael Powell, who's done a huge amount of the cornerstone for the offense um, for Trail Mix. We've seen him a lot in that downfield space. We're seeing Irish on a great card, but he's shot down by Aguilar. Number five now, Ben Larson with the disc. He's being pressured. Manages to get the lefty forehand away, tries to find Toby Walsh, but he can't connect. And really slow, I think there were cuts happening, but there was it was a bit stagnant. Handlers were holding the disc for quite a while there. Aguilar again has it, comes wide. There's two players underneath it. We're going to see Khatie goes back to Aguilar as they collapse into what looks a little bit more like a horizontal stack. It's going to be Toby Walsh who manages to get a bit of, a, bit of redemption, comes down with it, tries to send up, winds up the big huck, but it's not going to come away. Rob Simplebauer, aggressive in defense, pushes back to Irish, far sideline. Irish, a linchpin. And he's looking for those hawks, a linchpin, especially in this deep game that Trail Mix has been running. I really enjoy that they're mixing things up a little bit. Passing in with a disc right now, <laughs> but faking the lefty backhand, goes for it. Larson threads through. Miller That's Cartwright <laughs> with the disc. Quick dishy and back. He's looking for him. Who's going to be there? What a defensive play. By Arno Cartier. Manages to get up. Prevents uh, Trail Mix from walking away with the lead. A big crossfield hammer. Manages to nice. get to the hands of Tipuni. <laughs> and a scoop and it's a just style. upside down all day. Oh, Katia puts you it a what? little low. Should have been upside down. Should have been upside <laughs> down. I couldn't agree more. You've got to give the people what they want. So Aguilar on defense. It's going to be Hayden Irish to pick up and initiate for Trail Mix. We know the amount of edge that he can put on a disc. What? He can basically curve it anywhere he needs in the end zone. And that seems to be one of the big things that's keeping Trail Mix aggressive and in front in this game as they go up by one. The score is now 5-4 in the third game of our stream coverage for the 2024 Division 2 New Zealand Ultimate Championships here in Ototahi Christchurch. And just, I just want to comment on Trail Mix's ends on that. First of all, that, that real low-release backhand break that Irish keeps putting up, that is it's a weapon. I, I don't know how to describe my weapons knowledge is not strong enough to be able to accurately describe what he's consistently putting up, but that's lethal. And, it, you know, it, it has to be shut down. Shout out to Christchurch Real Fruit Ice Cream for giving us the energy, the excitement, the happiness, because what is ice cream but edible happiness here at the fields and also potentially inspiring some sweet plays, as I mentioned, with Trail Mix's end zone there, the open side cut and the break side, really giving Irish multiple options and you know he chose, chooses that break that beautiful clean break the low release one that he has every time I'm excited to see more of that over the course of the game wow. but, but again and it's one of those things where I, I feel as though this might uh, become a sort of undercurrent of the tournament is how do these teams recognize what the weapons their opposition have during the course of the game and what do they do to try and minimize the impact that they have so so far we've seen um, Hayden Irish basically put up two or three of those really low release sort of swooping um, around backhands and, and they haven't been able to be stopped so maybe we might see uh, as, as they if there is a turnover close to the end zone maybe we'll see Cog uh, really apply a bracket defense so instead of taking those individual matchups maybe they'll commit a couple of players to each side of the field so that they can get into position to play defensively against that throw a little bit quicker a little bit more reactively the disc comes up. 
And what a great pull. I just want to comment on, on a pull like this. It's coming down slowly. It's really fading. And that's the goal when you do pull a disc. You want to give it lots of hang time. But but there's not hanging now. His cog is off to the races. What quick movements. I love how fast they're moving with each other. This is indicative of a well-drilled team. They know what they're looking for. They know where the cuts are going to be. They're in each other's minds. You know, we're talking about about um, Millard Cartwright and his apparition is invisibility. But looking at, at cog right now, they're, they're reading minds. They're telekinetic with the disc at, at how quickly they're moving. I love this style. And it's fantastic as well to just recognize that we're only now, when they're right next to the end zone, as Aaron Whitehead puts that one away, that was absolutely his point, 100%. He fielded the pull and was taking every alternate pass on that one. Also, balking with the layout D attempts. You, you know, you have to give credit to that. There he is walking off. You know, you have to give credit to that. He was there. He laid it all out on the line, but difficult when you've got the speed of a player like Whitehead see, seeing it into his hands. And, but it, it, it really wasn't until the last sort of 15 or so meters that Credo were actually stopping and taking that second. So they just built that momentum and ran with it. I think great work and great leadership by Whitehead there mm -hmm. to initiate that. It was every other pass for the longest part of that game. We're seeing again that quick movement into that upline, looking back, find Sutherland instead. Yeah, and, and just to harp on this a little bit more, I think that's that's actually it's incredible defense right there. Balking was in prime position. He was marking the open side. He was exactly where he was supposed to be with Whitehead. He was stopping that open side cut. But when you have such close space and and, and the forces backhand, Whitehead was cutting to the break side, and Balking did everything he did. I, I think that, that yeah, he, he, he was perfect defense on his part. The only more perfect you can get is if you if you do have touch the disc. <laughs> touch yeah. the disc. <laughs> extra athleticism, but yeah, I think um, great offense right there and also great defense to see on, on both sides. So this is a fantastic game on display for you here. Probably um, w maybe one of the most interesting that we're going to see. I mean, it's tied up. These, these players are mixing things up. We're seeing a mixture of long game and give go. We see Michael Peters with a huge long pull. It's going to be fielded by, uh, fielded rather by Powell again. Faking that oh, lefty backhand does go up. Passing in. Just to start with, with that. That's it. The First time it was a catch. Second time it's unfortunately. The no, the no pivot offhand backhand is a tough throw because it, it you're trying to essentially reach around your opponent in order to throw it. It's a tough thing to do, particularly against a really aggressive defense. So we're going to see Poek looking for Dixon there right on the doorstep. Look into the middle, and so, yep, yep. I was going to say similar style to Trail Mix there. We have an unmarked player in the middle, but it looks like the reason he was unmarked was that it was a pick. So, again, potential, that, that, that there was a potential, or maybe there was contact um, on the defensive player that he couldn't follow the offense. So we'll see that again. So we're going to see Dixon pick up the disc here. We're seeing Elliot in the backfield space trying to curve around, trying to create something. In fact, it's here, it's there. Yep, there it is. So... As we saw uh, on the left-hand side of your screen, you saw the cr uh, the cog offender and the defender cut between where Parsonen and Murphy were. Uh, so between those two players, which means that Parsonen didn't feel as though he had a play to get involved. Had had he it, had he guaranteed that he wasn't going to commit contact. So an interesting blade there a little bit of a spicy throw i would say a spicy decision i love the smiles and the laughter on the field a few hands went up um it's it's not a bad decision if you know your team's going to come down with it we'll see again here stall count is getting high just puts the blade up lady throw to the open side and a lot of people under it but again if you know your team's going to come down with it and great positioning from Lawrence Elliott to, yeah, to reel that disc in. Really great read. That's what he did that last time too, hey? Yeah. <laughs> he, he knew exactly where it was going to go. All those people went up for it, and he, he just was in the best position. Is he, is he a librarian? What does he do when he doesn't play Frisbee? <laughs> Probably practices a lot, watches games, dreams about it. No. Practices jumping for fun. <laughs> so it's going to be the COG defensive line one more time. We're going to see Whitehead out with the disc to initiate everything. Uh, 
Cog up by one now, two points away from half. So a great work there. Yeah, yeah, clawing back. So, so Trail Mix really came out firing. They brought a lot of energy, some crisp, slicey throws, just a lot of strong, you know, speed on defense as well as offense. But I'm really excited to see in, the, in that last point and the, and the point before that, Cog have come out with a lot of really quick give goes, a lot of small ball. We're seeing a lot of diversity really in play style from massive hawks to some points where, again, their their Cog has been moving it really quickly in between players. Trail Mix kind of slowing it down to their tempo. A really compressed vertical stack in the center field that's passing it. We've got Powell looking deep. He's in plenty of space, but Whitehead closing aggressively. Good Not going to be enough. It's Powell for the score to tie the game. And as soon as he started streaking deep, I commented on this before with Sutherland going deep from the handler space. Powell here, you know, swings to the middle. Seeing that channel, that lane as an option on the break side and, and making a classic deep cut, cutting deep from the left third, from the break side of the field over to the open side for that open side hawk. It's, it's, it's clinical, it's textbook here once more. The, the break side going to the, the open side third of the field and running onto it. And also um, great closing speed from Whitehead, but, but the positioning is, is hard to contend with from Powell. That, I think, is, is the key thing that really allowed Trail Mix to do that. So, uh, despite the fact that Whitehead made a great uh, defensive play to peel off from his assignment, recognizing where the threat was, just that positioning by Powell, he managed to get his shoulder in front of it, uh, leaving the defense behind him. He was the only person who could have made a play without drawing some pretty significant contact. So, great work there by Trail Mix to tie the game. Shout out to the fans. Shout out to you all watching. Thank you for joining us. Shout out to those who are here in person and the furry friends who are joining us today. Loving the, the tasty smells of the ice cream from the sideline and no doubt beautiful plays like the one we just saw there on the field. Hands up. Trail Mix will be coming down on defense. And Cog with another chance to show us what are we going to see? Those, those long, beautiful hawks. Are we going to see that, that quick movement? The give goes. Aguilar with the disc. Yeah, great pull by Giles. It's Warren now with Silberbauer and Aguilar. It smells a bit zony out here. Cartier with an opportunity to push towards the near sideline. Some great through work. But Warren's got it. He's going to slightly overthrow. And Silberbau can't keep it alive. It's going to give the disc back to Trail Mix with an opportunity to take them within one of half. I do really like it. I've said it a lot. How that turnover happened, though, I think it was a great decision. It was an open side look. It was just a minor bauble execution, I think, that led to the turnover. That's how you want to see them happening, though. Walsh with the disc to Millard Cartwright, showing his, his ability in the handler space in addition to the deep. Looking for the strike. And inside, cross field. Not going to find the hands of one of his teammates, despite great, uh, great efforts there by both Calvert and Walsh. Put too much sauce on that throw. You know, it's almost lunchtime, and maybe they're thinking about that on the field. Big thank you, shout out to Hell Pizza, Hell's Pizza for supporting us today and giving us uh, some saucy slices to eat as well. Cartier and Warren now working through the offense. We've got Aguilar and Silberbauer to provide support, but it's Warren's point, and that's going to be received out of bounds by Silberbauer to give the disc back to Trail Mix for yet another attempt. We've got Vaith Levin walking up. He's picking up on the sideline with a strong forehand force, forcing towards towards the screen, towards you guys. That's Giles now with a great laser show too, to the surprise of no one, William Millard Cartwright. Three on the board for that young man, despite the fact that we saw him in the handler space not too long ago. Just confidently being able to nail those laser beam uplines. It's in his blood. He wants to score. He knows how to score points. He's, he loves being in the end zone. He loves st stopping the game by scoring the point. He, yeah, it's it's in his blood. That's what he wants. It's the Cat Buxer thing all over again. A number of years ago, I had the privilege of providing commentary for an event uh, that was 
brought to you by Alti TV, a trans-Tasman event in Auckland between uh, New Zealand, Australia and Japan. Um, one of the Australian uh, under-20 women's cat boxer at the time. I mean, she's still cat boxer. I don't know why I said at the time. Um, but I think she had three huge uh, scores in the first half. And I jokingly said to her during the halftime, I was like, it's okay, cat. You know, you can let someone else score one. The very first point of the next half, she threw the assist. And so... Maybe maybe there's just something about the people in Australia who score all the points. They recognise, like, hang on, maybe I'm being a little bit greedy. I'll do some uh, some work outside of the zone for a second. Um, it's really, really great to see. So they are now one point away from taking half over the top of Cog. The score is 7-6. Another timeout has been called. Yeah, again, so if they cinch this point, if Trail Mix cinches this point, then, then they take half. It's a huge... Yeah, it's a huge asset. If, if you can do that strategically, you're starting the second half up, you know, and, and we play by half. We play to point, you know, regardless of what the score is. It's always your point control, but you can tr control, you know, don't don't set your sights too far ahead. Do what you're doing in the moment and do that well, execute that well. So right now they're just looking to cinch out half the first half of the game to, to win that. Meanwhile, Cog discussing what they need to do on offense and then grind through a few defensive plays to also see if they can be the ones, first ones to make it up to eight points. So we have Cog taking the field. I'd be stoked if they if they have called a pull play. I'm not sure if they if they have that in their back pocket, but now would definitely be a great time, a pull play, a time when you're receiving the disc, especially if you have time to discuss it, where you run through a set series where where people run to certain places. It's it's choreographed to score a point. The idea is you score a point quite easily and quickly. You put one on the board right when you want to. I think it would be a great time if they did that. I, I would be stoked if we see it. Otherwise, I don't know, stoked to see the, the same clean offense that Cog has been playing. Fish in a barrel. Uh Fox in the hen house, 15 in the bucket. There's some classics. Uh, there's uh, the dead pony. Uh, there's there's a whole bunch of, of, of fantastic cold plays that have sort of been developed over the, the lifetime of Ultimate as a sport. And we're going to see um, so sort of what, what kind of creativity. There's some plays there. There's some fun Honestly, things. yeah. I mean, they could, they could be David Bowie albums. <laughs> you, just, you just never really know. Uh, so we're going to see this come down. We see the hand from Toby Sutherland looking to receive the desk. It's going to touch down with a lot of edge and roll early. <laughs> Great work by Poek to prevent too much of a yardage loss as we see uh, Sutherland and uh, Whitehead looking to initiate. A savvy zone here where they're really stopping. The, d the disc went high. It's a, it's a turnover. But but that, that saggy defense making it difficult, just stopping those undercuts. Faith Levin picks up, looks for Irish immediately. Marked by Murphy. He's giving up the backhand. We know that's a threat when Irish has the disc, but it's a lefty forehand looking over the top. Ooh. Sutherland applying just enough pressure. We yeah. see uh, Faith Levin spin around and recognize, nope, somebody's already going to eat that one up. So it's a great play by Sutherland there mm. to get the disc back for Cog, hoping to tie up the game. A bit of a zone defense on the switch now, though. Yeah, placing a lot of pressure in the, in the closer part of the field. So the challenge is just like with the last turnover that Cog had, is to throw over around, get it past that first line of defense. We see open players. And with the calm conditions, players like Sutherland can put those throws up. Again, a high throw, find, just finding the players. Great job recognizing that, executing that. And now they've pushed past. They've got to keep that momentum going before the, the zone can set again and lock in. The disc goes up deep. Sutherland for Fuller and a score to tie up the game. Fantastic work there. I think there were a couple of moments there against that zone where we saw number 23, Alex Bish, over on the near sideline. Uh, really a great option for a potential crossfield hammer, but it's one of those things where... You know, he, he was a little bit out of position on that previous hammer. It touched his hand and went to turf, generated the turn. Maybe that's something that the handlers are keeping in mind. They're looking and thinking, oh, I don't know if I necessarily trust that connection. I'm looking for something else. And the team that's able to kind of get past those, like, mental hesitations, they can often come back really, really stronger after a turnover. So hopefully we will see uh, a little bit more trust. I'd personally love to see a couple more shots going out to number 23 on COG, Alex Bish. Let the man have his, let the man eat. 
Big dog's got to <laughs> eat. Big dog's got to eat. Woof. I love that. I, that point made me so happy. That, that connection made me so happy. Such a beautiful outside-in forehand streaking across the field with just enough touch, just enough slight blade on it. We're looking at the score, 7-7. Seven, seven. So it is, what is it, Blair? It's a galaxy <laughs> point. So as we said, a game to 15, the half time will occur when the first team reaches eight. With both teams on seven, the next team to score is going to be the one that walks away with the half. Now the question is, is it going to be Cog with a turnover and a conversion? Or is it going to be Trail Mix with a clean offensive hold? Now we know that we have seen um, Hayden Irish, number 24 for Trail Mix, and, and on that previous point, certainly the defense that Cog were playing, they were giving him that backhand that we've seen him use to such great effect to score in this game. He's, he's such a great asset for this Trail Mix side. He could be the one to close out this point right now, especially when if he's joined on the field by number eight, Millard Cartwright. But we do have, we do have as, as Blair just mentioned, Cog is starting off on defense. That's slightly the back foot, and I, I would say... Oh, Ooh, no. a great attempt. It's a, little, it's a bit bleedy. Blades tend to drop a bit faster. He's taking off his knee brace. I certainly hope that that's, that's okay for his knee. Poic to Whitehead. Cog with that much needed turnover again. You need to grind and play defense before you execute the perfect all offensive strategy. Whitehead looking for the disc. And that's going to be it. I, I feel like they should be celebrating more. That was such an exciting point. That catch. was a great closeout by Aaron Whitehead to yeah. take Cog to half. Now, Kelsey, I think a question um, that I'm going to pose that may not have an answer. It could be rhetorical. It could be something for the people at home to consider. Whether or not Cog earned that turn or whether or not they were given it and capitalized. I think that that's something that Trail Mix will be taking, not just to the sideline now, but maybe to sleep tonight. It's those little errors that that haunt you. <laughs> but so, a great work by Whitehead yeah. to just have that position, just shoulder right in front of his defender, manages to go up and get it. He walks away with the score for the half time. So, I mean, he's, he's been playing fantastically well for this cog side. We've seen him drive quite a few points when they're focusing on that short-range small ball. We've seen him put up some great hucks as well, and we've seen him be able to close. So really, really good work. I mean, I think it's as much as he stands out, it's still important to recognize that the rest of the team are doing such fantastic work. We've got Aguilar, we've got Sam Poek, uh, Arno Cartier, uh, Max Warren as well is doing a huge amount of work to break open the midfield. So... Uh, we will be back with you after a very short break. Very uh, short break, but also I just want to con comment on the halftime show that we have some incredible um, uh, freestyle frisbee here from our four-legged friends chasing down hucks. Uh, just some incredible athleticism on display as a wee halftime show. As Blair said, we will be back soon after halftime, though. Oh, and a bobble in the end zone. It's uh, two, <laughs> two hands for beginners, little buddy. Two hands for <laughs> beginners. But until then, my name is Blair Monroe. I'm Kelsey Bielek. We will be back with you very soon for the uh, continued coverage of the uh, first day, third stream of the 2024 New Zealand Ultimate Championships at Bob Dean's Field in Ototahi, Christchurch. We will see you again very shortly.
Kia ora koutou, no mai haere mai, hello everyone and welcome back to this, the second half of the third game of the Division 2 Ultimate Frisbee Championships in here, beautiful Ototahi Christchurch. Sorry, that's game three, but it's also the second match of the Opens Division, which is what we're watching here. The uh, rumbling matchup between Trail Mix on the right, so they'll be starting on defense in red, hailing from Canberra, Australia against Cog, hailing from Christchurch, the locals. Um, in blue, in navy blue on the left side of your screen. I'm joined here by Blair Monroe, and my name is Kelsey Bielek. Thanks for coming back for the second half after seeing the entertaining, entertaining halftime antics from Obi-Wan Kenobi, the pup, as he was chasing some deep discs in the end zone. The disc goes up, and we have Cog on offense. A great pull by Irish from uh, Trail Mix to get that nice roll and lost ground, but Aguilar is going to send it big. Oh, some great work there as the disc started to fade over. Just some good defensive positioning there by the uh, Trail Mix player to really stop uh, Henry Eden Mann from getting a good read and a good position to be able to receive that one. So, uh, He's marking Irish. One thing that Aguilar is definitely going to be watching out for is that break, that, that backhand break that we've seen uh, time and time again in the first half. Nice movement right off the bat. Irish looking for that option. Great small movements. Toby Walsh fires one through for Mark Bradley to Parsonen. Oh, the hammer goes cross field. Cross field hammer. Gets a huge bite out of uh, Peters. Back to Irish. Manages to get a look out of Aguilar on that fake. Goes around to Parsonen. And again, Aguilar are doing a great job of shutting down that, that, that backhand break. So that's Walsh now with the disc on the far sideline. Faking players passed. Resets to a centered Irish. Nice defense right now by Cog, kind of limiting the options downfield. Nonetheless, ooh, that's what I like to see. That's an inside break, baby. Yeah, with his with the, with a backhand break shut down, he's showing that he has that inside too. And how do you stop someone from breaking the mark if they have both the inside and the around? Great reception there. Nice reach by Parsonen. Back to Irish. He's got a little bit of room as Aguilar slowly closes the jaws. A big hammer! You love to see it, especially when you've got a players like Peters running through and getting just enough wow. of a sniff to keep it out of the hands. Oh, beautiful, though. Oh, my God, father. And such poise. Oh, the power in that. And what a great throw. Oh. That was pretty. Oh, my goodness. But such, such calm and poised ultimate there from Trail Mix. Really great to see that offense. We've got Cog now with the disc as it sees the turf, giving Trail Mix another chance. I think that slipped out of his hand on the reset attempt to Aguilar. We're going to see Irish. He's going to do another hammer. No, he's not, but he's going to put out the bladey forehand. Yeah, it's soft. Look. It's clean. It's easy to run onto. Looking for Will Giles managing to walk away with that one. That's going to tie up the game. The score is now 8-8 in this race to 15. We're seeing Cog walking off the field. High fives all around for Trail Mix as they're celebrating that success. You know, while, while Cog may have, have taken half there, it's, it's exciting to see, you know, that team that's down on the back foot, to see them come out firing like this, showing that it's still anyone's game. And not just that they're still firing in the second half, but also that they started the half on defense. So they managed to generate their turn and close it to get the uh, to get the point there, which shows that they can. They haven't let that first half really have an impact mentally on their ability to play defense, which is fantastic to see. They're going to be coming out on defense yet again. We're going to see if they can do it one more time. But we have a really solid offensive core. We've got Powick, we've got Whitehead, we've got Elliott, we've got Fuller. Some really strong players on that cog side. Um, players who can definitely put the disc up and players who can bring it down. So we'll see whether or not that's going to be enough to overcome um, some really, really good teamwork and really good awareness that we're seeing from this uh, trail mix team from Canberra. And also just commenting on Cog coming out on offense here, I've been really stoked to see the creativity and 
flexibility. They're not stuck in a rut of one play style. They've shown us that they can throw those long, deep hawks. They can hold the disc and wait for options to open up. And they can also just play that fast moving, really fast moving ultimate. The disc, the hawk goes up and it rolls into the end zone. White had to chase it down. Nearly oh managing God. to steal with a Callahan for balking. Great attempt. It's not going to be enough. Looks like a, a travel was called. That that was epic. I love that energy again. So we've got Balking and the entire Trail Mix team down here playing as if they don't have 12 players on their roster, playing with the energy, power, you know, that as if they, you know, they've got likes for days. It, it's really a, a treat to see plays like that happening. So just a reminder for those at home, it is a self-officiated sport, so it's up to the players to make calls and resolve them based on... Uh, coming to a common understanding of what should have happened had the, the violation of the rules not occurred. So it looks like uh, Aaron Whitehead pressured in his own end zone. Marked down by Bocking now. Finds Poick. We're seeing a great attempt at uh, by Dixon to really stretch the depth of the field. Whitehead again. And it's a really scary place to be, folks. So, so again, when we see people catching the disc in the end zone off the pole, that that's where you have to keep it. And and if the disc goes out of the bounds, if it goes out of bounds during play, you can walk it up to the white line, which we often see. So just to clarify as well, looks like a stall out has been called. So much like a shot clock in basketball, when a player is in possession of the disc with an established pivot point, their defensive assignment can start a, a 10 second count. Um, and so, it looks like that is going to be a turnover, so it's an uncontested stall. So great pressure by Bocking to force Whitehead to use up his 10 seconds with the disc. It's going to give Trail Mix an opportunity here. We're going to see Powell walk up to take it right on the corner. So that's defense, Blair. That's every type of defense we've seen. That's an incredible pull, followed by you know the, the energy and tenacity to get down there and the athleticism to do that as fast as you can, followed by shut down defense, a strong mark. Saw a lot of head fakes from Bocking trying to get separation from Whitehead. He was really trying to attack that front corner and just could not get there. So great defense by uh, Whitehead, but the, the handles on, on Powell enough to just float it out into space yeah. to a great breakthrough there. We might get a chance to see that again. And when, I think it's really important to remember they made a great call there. Trey Mike stayed looking then at the break, putting that pop pass around and giving him the space to run onto it too. Everyone else was out of the end zone, giving him room so it wasn't congested with defenders. It wasn't congested, you know, with anyone else. He had space to run onto it. But also when you have a player that comes out that's firing, like he almost scored that Callahan right when the disc went up. And when you have a player that's that energetic, that's turned, you know, that's firing, that's turned up the energy. I think it's a really smart call to put them in the end zone, to isolate them as the person who's going to score the point. You know, we've talked time and time again and seen Millard Cartwright out here racking up the points for the team, but also just showing, you know, regardless, we, we, we have our scores, we have our assisters, we have people who are the glue people, they run the midfield. But also when someone's firing and when they're on, you know, put them in a position where they can continue to succeed. Absolutely, and Trail Mix now with their second break of the half. So Cog took half, the score was 8-7, the score is now 9-8 to Trail Mix. So it's two back-to-back, -back, both off generating a turnover while on defense and being able to convert by Trail Mix. So fantastic defensive work here. Almost a little bit of a clinic for the locals being put on display by the side from Canberra. We're going to see if they're able to continue it and crack double digits. We, we, we did see this, this similar start to the first half. So I'm also wondering, I, I would like to see Trail Mix continue with this momentum. They started off the first half really strong. They came out firing from, from like from the first throw. You know, they were, they were out there. So I want to keep them, I want to see them keep that, that energy up. And Cog really matched that later on in the second half. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how this continues to play out. Sutherland directing the field there. <laughs> a late uh, but great attempt at a layout by Whitehead to try and keep that one alive. It's not going to work. We're going to see Irish pick up to initiate. He's in the space where we know he can put it. Love that fake. Goes all the way through to Vaith Levin. Back to Irish. That same uh, backhand break throw. It's going to be Toby Walsh now. Back to Irish. Marked by Whitehead. We're going to see whether or not he's got what it takes on defense. He can't stop it going back around. It's Fuller trying to shut down Vaith Levin. Can't do it. Finds Giles marked by Sutherland. A great upline cut, but it's shut down by Whitehead. There it is. The long ball looking for Giles. He's coming down with it, and he's not in bounds. There it is. Closes out two. 
to the surprise of no one. Say it with me, folks at home. William Miller Cartwright. Cartwright, friends. Yeah, with the point also just it's just tearing the disc out of the sky. You know, the trail mix has been thrown up in celebration as it comes down to the ground for the point. And there's that outside in forehand streaking around straight into the hands of Giles to Miller Cartwright. One more time. An open side throw, just a little pop pass in the end zone. That's one of the things that we've actually talked about quite a lot so far, I think, this tournament, Kelsey. Just the importance of, of cutting for a disc that's not going to make it into the end zone. Recognizing mm. if it falls short, where do I need to attack that's going to give my team the most advantage? Mm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's, uh, yeah, great to see them backing each other up, providing that support on the field. I think also I, I want to comment on the three points that Trailmix has just scored unanswered. We saw in the first half Credo called, sorry, Cog called timeouts to maybe throw a wrench in that momentum. They, they started picking up their own energy, but this is a really critical time. Three points in a row is, is the magical number in Ultimate where, where three points in a row unanswered, you, you're starting to build a bit of a lead. And, you know, this, this should, should be really a wake-up call for COG right now that, that this is the time. You know, this is the time to stop to stop that they're coming out on offense it's the time to play clean offense maybe make less exciting decisions oh what a touch through by parson and to shut down that momentum by cog irish with a big hammer I love this. can he connect not quite all zero hammer <laughs> oh you love to see it i mean and it's one of those things if you've got a consistent hammer and you know how it throws you're going to understand the arc well enough to put it out into space so Cog are going to get another opportunity. We saw Peters doing a huge amount of the work and continuing to do so, but he's not going to be able to get it this time. Cog have been making these connections earlier, and they're just off. They're just slightly off now. They're not. They're not quite firing in sync together. And we're and we're seeing Trailmix capitalize on this power with a disc with Irish, who's, who's been making a lot of these really close cuts. The disc goes downfield. Not gonna come back in. And I like his decision there. I like what he was looking for. Um, he needs, I think, a little more outside in. Maybe a higher throw could have reeled its way back into the end zone for a point. But we've got Cog again on offense. Aguilar and Cartier slips one through. Some good positioning by Bocking to get there. And unfortunately, it was contact drawn. We're going to see Parson him with the disc now. He's calling for someone to go long. There's the hammer looking for Powell. Not able to get him. It, it, it worked there. But interesting, the way the hammer falls, it, it, it went right over. It was, it was a, quite a dangerous, I think, decision. It could have been a catch, and I want to acknowledge that. But the way it's coming over across all of that defense... I would have maybe opted, if possible, for an outside and forehand as a firing shot. Looks like there's a call, though, Blair. What's happening on the field? Uh, I believe it was an injury call. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so we're just going to see what's happening. Uh, yeah, so it looks like uh, Aaron Whitehead has taken uh, the field. Um, Cartier starting things off early. A little try midfield thread looking for Fejanini. Looks for Peters with a big shot going up. Who's going to be underneath it? It's going to be passing in. What a denial. Way to the ground, yeah. So quite a few turnovers this point. Both teams, I think this is really more than we've seen in previous ones. Hands high, trying to stop any high throws from Powell, maybe recognizing the few hammers that we've seen pulled out. That's Jack Reed with the disc now. Looks, looks back, tries to find Irish, can't get him. The zone defense from Cog that we're seeing. Really interesting decision. I'm, I'm excited they're seeing this just to see how Trail Mix will respond. Great shot up there. Looks for Calvair. Manages to find him. A good example, I think, um, when when different teams come from, from different countries, when you're playing against people you haven't played before, we, often in New Zealand we're seeing similar strategies recycled around the country. And here, this is new for Trail Mix to maybe see a different different style of zone. They're not phased at all as they're walking their way downfield. Irish with disc in hand. N now, finally, there's a mark on him. 
He loves those bladey powers. As we hear from the LTTV staff, they're, they're, they're commentating on the side. They're saying, oh, that's beautiful. And I have to echo that as well, Blair. And a one, and a two, and a three. William Millard Cartwright. Yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's five on the board for him so far. Uh, really remarkable. I mean, how is it that he's just always open? I mean... It's weird that he's wearing the number eight, when I think 7 Eleven is probably more appropriate. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, it, it's just an easy catch for him. And maybe that was zone. I, I wasn't, wasn't paying attention there. Was Cog trying to maintain the zone through the end zone? I think so. So typically, just to, um, for those who may not be aware, uh, the closer you get to an end zone, the more inclined teams are to collapse to a match defense because um, the throws themselves aren't as long. So if you're looking at the full width of the field and I'm going to put up a throw that's 45 meters, the flight time of that disc is going to be enough to give someone on my team time to respond. If we maintain that zone structure, we're not as sort of close and as compressed around the disc. Uh, so what will happen is we're focusing on short passes as we look to try and close things out. What that means is they're going to have a shorter flight time and I'm going to have less time to respond defensively. Whereas if I switch to a match defense, we can then focus on those individual matchups and rather than having to read the entire play, all I have to do is stop my person from getting the disc. So you would typically see a switch to match defense and I'm not sure whether or not Cog made that adjustment which kind of opened things up to have a wide open... Uh, Millard Cartwright I, for the score. There, there are teams that will opt to stay in a zone, in the end zone. And, you know, I've, I've played some really strong points with where you have to be so dialed in with teams where you stay in that space and you're marking the space. But but the comms have to be there. And especially, as Blair just mentioned, with a player like Millard Cartwright who already knows how to find the open space and, and apparate into it. It's, it's a challenge. Credo, sorry, Cog off to the races with the quick give and goes. Whitehead throwing right now it's another point it's it's a one point well, at least one layout per point but he can't reel it in we've got irish picking up with the disc and it's an unforced error but it's an opportunity here for uh trail mix to go five unanswered points so they've had four and a half remember the win mm -hmm. cog took half it was eight seven the score is now 11 eight so we've got larson with the disc big fakes manages to get some opening around cartier finds irish on the far sideline marked by whitehead Nice aggressive cuts uh, by Giles. He's going nice and around. Good grief, he's got to stop doing that. It's making the rest of us look bad. Bounces the disc off Walsh, goes around one more time. I do want to comment on the on the way they're running their offense right now. There's a stack in the middle of the field right there, hand up, but but really, who's in it? There's so much dynamis dynamicism, there's so much movement. Everyone is making options. They're at the races, they're moving, they're getting open, they're, they're covered, and then they're, they're creating more space, they're clearing out. I really enjoy the offense that Trail Mix is running right now. They're giving so many options to their handlers, and it's really hard to defend. Can they find that open option? It looks like there was a foul on the mark. Larson calling a foul against Cartier on the throw. It did shank over quite early. Uh, it's mm -hmm. uncharacteristic of what we've seen from them so far. Yeah. So, in fact, we'll get another chance to see it. Oh, did it affect the throw? Yeah, it's an interesting thing. It, it may have, He may have released the disc before. Um, yeah, I, that's an interesting call there. When we get to see it again in slow motion, it looks like the disc was comfortably out of his hand before any contact was drawn. However, as it's a self-officiated sport, it is up to the players to make that call. Some people would argue that that regardless with the follow-through, you know, because there was contact, maybe maybe it's still still a valid call. As as Blair's just saying, though, it's up to them on the field, and and up to you at home if if you want to comment, if you want to weigh in. Conversations happening though. They're still discussing what happened. It looks like it's a contested foul. Yeah, so what, what that what, what's happening there is is the two players have recognized they're not going to be able to come to an agreement. And so the best thing to do is to pretend that it didn't happen. So we're going to reset <laughs> things. Larson's going to retain possession of the disc um, as though the throw had never happened. He's going to get another opportunity. And we're going to see whether or not Trail Mix can, in fact, put five points on the board unanswered by Cobb. Yeah. I think important to note, they're going to pretend it didn't happen, except also at the end of the game, teams will be marking, they'll be scoring the other team on spirit. There's a few different things that, they, that come into account here, that come into play. That's, for example, communication, positive attitude and self-control, rules, knowledge and use, and how the other teams have been displaying these, these, these attributes on the field. So it's something that they're going to forget about what happened, but at the same time, it's... 
How did he make it through so many hands without even touching it? I could not begin to tell you, Kelsey. Uh, we're going to see Peters pick up to Nishé, finds Whitehead marked by Irish far sideline. They've given him the backhand, so they're really pushing the disc towards that far sideline. A nice little break there by Poic, uh, by Cartier, sorry. So at the end of the day, though, at the end of this game, teams will they will they will score each other, and at the end of the tournament, there will not only be a winner of the tournament, the the, the team that wins, but also the the spirit winner. So so it is an important component. It's a, it's a respected. It's an important part of this game. You can't play ultimate first view without spirit. The disc goes up. Whitehead, looking for Warren. Warren and manages to tiptoe it in. He twinkle toes. Fred Flintstones uh -huh. his way through the back of the end zone to put that score on the board. So Much that needed. ends the train. The, the um train. The, the the sort of um, huge amount of momentum. So a really necessary point for Cog to bring it back within two. Uh, another point there by Trail Mix might have actually been enough to seal up the game and just in terms of momentum, in terms of morale. So great work there by Whitehead taking a... Um, yeah. Almost the, the sort of flip side, no, the, the, the sort of counterpoint to Irish using that same massive around backhand. Yeah, and I really curving like around the defense. Also, when, when points are scored in the back of the end zone, so often we see those front cones or, or the sides being utilized, but really the, the, the back of the end zone is as valid of a space as anywhere else. And uh, yeah, I, I like to see it. it's difficult to defend that space as well. It's not often that we're seeing, you know, points scored back there. So just great to see Cog using the full length of the field and reeling in these points. So we're seeing a timeout called. I'm wondering uh, which side was the one who called the timeout. Yeah. Um, it's, it's one of nature's mysteries. I mean, it could be a case of Cog kind of needed that to say, hey, we managed to get it to work. So it looks like Cog did call the timeout. Uh, and they're going to have the opportunity to say, hey, what worked? What did we do mm. to really shut down that momentum? Uh, it's going to be a necessary and really valuable few uh, moments for the uh, trail mix to really get some, some legs back underneath them. I mean, they've had a fantastic run in the start of the second half, uh, but it is clearly taxing them. I mean, they have a really small roster, all mm -hmm. things considered. So just every moment that they get to get some water down, yep. gulp down some air, just refresh themselves a little bit, it's going to be super valuable for them. Especially so. this, in this in the second half towards the end of the game. Yeah, especially that. So we are 70 minutes into our 90 minute cap. So we've got another 20 minutes of play time or we're going to see what happens um, if, if one team doesn't make it to 15. So if that does uh, eventuate, we will talk you through what the implications of that are. But at the moment, we're still looking for a race to 15. We're going to see Trail Mix come out on offense. And it's it's a it's a race to 15, but less of a race with the, the hard defense on the field, you know. When, when offense isn't quite firing as strong, you know, when there's a few more turnovers, when defense is playing its best, it really draws out those points. It draws out the legs. It shows when the training comes into play. It comes on the field. So both teams, you know, we're still at the very beginning, but it's a, it's a long game. It's a game to 15. It's a hotly contested game. So, yeah, whoever can dig deep and add that energy now is going to come away with it. Cog really needing to make up those points, but when you're on a train, you know, when when you're choo-chooing along, it's awfully difficult to stop a train. You know, it takes kilometers. So so can they do that? We'll see what they have in store on defense as Sutherland launches the disc in a beautiful pull downfield to Pasanen. Straight through to Powell early. We're going to see Irish. Looks like he was trying to stretch into a deep cut, immediately comes back into the handle space where he does his best work. Big rip of a backhand, it's fading towards the near sideline. Passing in, jumps it in, looks like it's going to be signaled in by one of the Credo other cog players. So the question here, when he had control of the disc, was were his feet on the ground or was he already in the air? <laughs> we're seeing with the feet right there, he's already in the end zone. But again, did he jump in after he had control? Or did he jump? Or did he catch the disc and then, and then proceed jump, to jump which into the zone? Can do it is it is relatively common. So once again, that beautiful hug. He's clean from our perspective. He was off the ground before making con uh, contact with and control of the disc. I would say, I would say, yeah. I, I think I also just want to comment on the defense here. Interestingly, it, oh, it looks like Sutherland, was he forcing him backhand? It looked like they'd switched the force, which I think wouldn't necessarily be a bad idea. There's still conversation on the field about what happened. Looks like 
Look, a call was not uh, made that it, the disc was not in. Now, if that's the case, all that will happen is Parson will bring the disc to the front of the end zone. Uh, play will resume as it has, and then hopefully he gets an opportunity to finish things off. And there it is. Don't lie, folks. Just don't lie. You know who else doesn't lie? Who's that? William Millard Cartwright. Sorry, can you say that one more time? <laughs> so, sorry, just for those uh, those watching at home, William Millard Cartwright, maybe the Kobe Bryant of Australian Ultimate? Oh. The Michael Jordan of Australian <laughs> Ultimate? What are, we, what are we doing, folks? What are we doing here? Just, oh my God, Cartwright can't do no wrong. My Godfather. What a fantastic performance by him. I think that's seven now. Yeah, you've been tallying them up. It's uh, yeah, really, really impressive ability to to know where he needs to be in the end zone. Also to read like what's happening with the play downfield and time his cuts, or even just stand in the open space and and see it. And and I don't want this to knock in any way his his ability because so much of the time I think if anything it's a compliment that so often he's he's just catching the disc in the bread basket making it look easy because because it is but there's that's a massive testament to him being so open and so uncovered and and why throw you know wh why have to take to the skies and sky people and lay your body out on the line if, if you don't need to it's yeah a testament to the skill we're just seeing the replay there again a few more times to it, us, it, it did it, look like he it was looks in. a yeah, but I mean, if you slow it down enough, it's it's kind of hard to tell. Was he still in contact with the ground as he started getting control? So I think ultimately what that means, the players made the right call uh, by just continuing as though the disc were not in. Um, really, really clever, uh, really spirited, nice display of sports personship there. Uh, we're going to see Powell with the disc to pull as Trail Mix are up by three. And it's warming up now. Also of note, it's getting a little bit more windy. I really, w I really don't expect it to impact throws very much, aside from maybe those if, if people are putting out push passes or anything without much much spin on it or much touch. But really, just just as a heads up, the, the it's getting a little bit gusty. Also with the sun heating up the grass, the dew is gone, so no more wet disc to contend with. That's Murphy on a great undercut, working with Sutherland to Fuller, Sutherland again, and just doing the most. The horn just went, indicating that games, oh, sounds like it was elsewhere. Whitehead with the disc, finding Sutherland on the open side. Yeah, so I believe because of the asymmetry in our pulls, that hoot of the just went was in line with the 75 minute soft cap for other games. So it isn't right. relevant for our game. We're still going to be playing 2.15 with another 15 minutes on the clock as we see Sutherland put one through to Whitehead for another score. Much needed for Cog. As we mentioned, the comeback train, and it's starting to look two points in a row like they're on it. Interesting to see this theme across both teams that when they score, they score in bursts. It's, uh, yeah, it, I think indicative of potentially mental response. When you're, when you're down a point, it's easier to to lose momentum and then and then after you score a point or two you, you carry that you let that carry you through the next few we see Sutherland clapping he's trying to he's trying to keep that energy alive that point one more time the hammer fake one thing I really enjoy we've seen a few hammer fakes turn into backhands it's really convenient to, to bring the disc down and then be in the position where you're holding on to it it, it changed the grip to look as, to as, you're, as you're resetting that fake, yeah. And it's one of those things as well where, you know, quite often all you need to do is throw that throw once and have it come off, and then it, it becomes something yeah. that the defense needs to respond to, which is why we're able to see those hammer fakes lead into nice open backhand shots. So we're going to see Cog come down on defense. It's going to be Peters with the disc for the pull. No doubt. And we're hearing from the sideline the force is going to be forehands. Unsurprising, something we've seen for the course of the game. I, I mean, I did mention it before. I think it would be interesting to force backhand, though, to give, especially Irish, who we've seen a, with a lot of those breaks, to give him that backhand. He's not going to be throwing the backhand break if he's given the backhand throws. It would really challenge the around the, the forehand around. I throws. mean, to, to be fair, I, I do think that if they give if they give Trail Mix the uh, the backhand, it won't be in a round break. It'll just be a backhand huck to <laughs> probably William Millard Cartwright, if I'm honest. Yeah. Uh, Speaking of, so yes, so they're forcing towards the near sideline, which is going to be in the trail mix. We're moving from the left-hand side of your screen to the right. Nice under gainer. 
are going to be predominantly given a right handies forehand. A high release, soft flick oh to gosh. Parson in for the score. That was too fast and too furious for me. They're, Beautiful they're not work. friends, they're family out there. Family. The score is now 13 10 in favor of the side from Canberra as Cog players jog it wow. back to the line to come down on offense one more time. What a, what a great point. So it's just so clean, the separation. You know, the, the trust, the ability to find each other here as we're talking about the celebration. Just it's the high-release forehand here as well. Look, boop. Just absolutely beautiful, nice and clean over the top <laughs> of the defense. Common throw that we'd see put out, you know, finding that the second player, because uh, because Walsh, Toby Walsh was was open there on the on the underside of the break side. We see back to the swing to Irish, and and again Toby Walsh, he's he's open over there, number eleven, but it goes over him. The vision to see, passing in as the mm. player in the end zone. Yeah, what what a beautiful point. Just fantastic way to close that one out. A great sports personship there by number 16 for Cog, Ferrarinini. Uh, giving him a little bit of, giving him props, throwing the flowers. Some great work there. But we're going to see Trail Mix now on defense. Two points away from a win. Two points away. And we have Millard Cartwright with disc in hand. He's going to be pulling for Trail Mix. Credo indicating that they're ready. What will they be running on offense? The disc goes up. It's fading high towards the far sidelines. That's going to be signaled brick by Aguilar. So he's going to take that to a point in the midfield, about 18 meters in front of the defensive end zone. So there's going to be no positional advantage conferred to Trail Mix by having the disc go out of bounds on that first pull of the point. He's accompanied by Michael Peters in the handling space. And we're seeing, it looks like a pearl downfield <laughs> with Warren isolated. Looking to the open side and finding that easily. Looking to the beautiful continuation to Ferrarini. Aguilar is available as a reset, but you can see it look, looks down the line. Oh, nice movements. To Warren for the score. He's what a fantastic effort there by he's, Cog. He's a beast in the end zone. Warren, he's, he, he's cleaning it up. Such, it's such good reads on where the disc is going to be. Oftentimes, you know, a little bit, we've seen him overshot a little bit, but he has no struggle in pulling it back in. That uh, was just a fantastic play. I mean, again, as you were saying, they were, they looked to be setting up that initial pearl. So yeah. the pearl is, is is the prize, right? It's it's an oyster, you imagine, sort of a, a clam or a, an oyster opening up. The pearl is the prize in the center. So that's the target that the handlers are looking to hit. So they set uh, him up with enough space for him to run essentially an isolation cut that saw him with the disc on the far sideline. And then after offloading it and using that momentum to push that into a deep cut, finds himself in plenty of space in the end zone to pull that point down. And we do say in ultimate that that point was largely played down the sideline, which can be tricky. Of course, when the disc is in the middle of the field, you have so much more space to work with. But I actually, I really like, there's just the flow. They found those connections, boom, 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 down the field. You know, Ferrarini, after he made that, that cut to the sideline, he was looking to swing and pivot back to the middle. But but easily, I, you know, while... It's, it's usually not great ultimate, trying to, trying to force the disc down the sideline without centering. I really liked it there. I liked the flow, the consistency, the movement, and how they scored the point. And so the disc is high, but it's got enough edge to bring it back towards the center field. It's going to be fielded by Parsonen as Poek applies that early defensive pressure, but he manages to find Irish anyway. Sullen and aggressive on defense. Can't stop. <laughs> Millard Cartwright getting the disc. It's Giles, puts it through low, finds Walsh, Toby Walsh putting it up. Oh, a nice catch under pressure. And that is going to be Michael Powell with the score Ooh. to take trail mix within one of a game. Within one. One thing, I, I, it, I, like, where's the defense? I mean, they're putting pressure on, but right now trail mix is just... They're making so many open cuts. There with the positioning, the hips were turned downfield. Hard to adjust when your player Walsh just cuts under. You know, you have to turn around 180 degrees. So then the deep look there, it's, it's, they're doing such a great job of just getting open off the cuts. And I want to see Cog stepping up that defense a little bit more. And it looks like what's going to be the last timeout of the game has been called. We do see trail mix on the screen and a very, very small, tight huddle. All they need to do now is generate a single turnover and convert, and they can walk away with a win on stream with their heads held high. Cog 
three points behind, four points away from a win. Everything Cog has to do from now on has to be perfect. We're seeing some some chanting cheers over here as, as Trail Mix are trying to build up the energy. So they're going to come out on defense. That is, if they do score this point, if they want to win the game right now, they need to grind through a defensive point. They need to get that turnover, that, that strong defense. And then after that, they need to start that offensive journey and score the point with, with clean, clinical, no room for errors or mistakes. So this is, again, if they want to score the point now this could be a time when they're putting on a universe line if they want to cinch it there's a little bit of space so they could they, they are allowed a few more points if they still want to win meanwhile we've got cog on the other hand they're they're coming out on offense so they have that you know we expect them to score this point you always expect offense when you're in that position you you're expected there's there's nothing stopping you you don't have to grind through that defensive play first so so they're in a position where it's it's a hundred percent and you know it's there's no room for errors or 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 they might they might lose you know mm -hmm. so so that's in their minds right now they're they're in it they have to you know grind through that and 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 play that clean perfect offense there's there's minimal room for error there's only a few points left for the game and if trail mix have their way there's only going to be one point left in the game as we see alexi parson in with the disc to start us off with the pull we see toby sutherland giving the signal for readiness it all comes down to this a huge nice rip towards the near sideline with a little bit of fade it's going to bring it back towards center field dixon dixon with the disc looking for options struggling to find them fuller as the option as we see yes. poic on a great bait cut back in towards the handler space toby sutherland with an up line so a couple of a lot of movement as whitehead puts a long shot up oh, oh what an attempt <laughs> by murphy good grief. good grief what a beautiful layout that was and as well he could he did exactly, the distance was coming in over the top. He turned towards the far sideline to try and get a read on it. But as it started to curve around, he ended up doing a full 360 and still managed to get within inches off a layout. I'm inclined to let him have it, uh, yeah, right. to be honest. It just looks that good. It's painful to see a turnover like that. You know, I, I love the execution and I love the connection. It obviously could have had a little bit less sauce, a little bit less power on it. But he was, yeah, just, just centimeters away from making that catch. Hey. And and that's the, that's the thing is you recognize, hey, you're a few points down. Maybe you need something big to really get the momentum back on your side. But you put a shot like up, up that. And if your player doesn't get it, you're giving the disc back to your opponents who, again are only one clean possession away yeah. from winning the game. So now they're they're in that situation. I think, yeah, you talked about it before for half. You said, did Trail Mix for Galaxy Point, did they, did, did Cog fight for that? Or were they given that last point? And now we're in the same situation. Did, did Cog give Trail Mix this turnover or did Trail Mix fight for it? Regardless, they fought the game thus far to get to 14 points and they're gonna fight now to try to clean it out and close it up all right predictions here we're going to see the second cut from millard cartwright oh great great <laughs> undercut <laughs> great work by balking there marked by whitehead who manages to get a tip but ireland with a tumbling layout to keep that alive a laser beam up to giles far sideline works back to irish faith levin as he finds the inside pass a little bit of contact from cog there Calvert with the disc now finds Giles immediately pushes into an upline cut Sutherland trying to mark Irish aggressively it's going to be Larson and we can see throws like that with a lack of windy conditions that's an inside out backhand to the break side they're within firing distance Giles looking for options he's pivoting around an easy cut from the front of the stack Vaith Levin with the disc finding the open side and that's, that's gonna it. be Calvert to close things out as trail makes go up 15 over COG 11. What a fantastic performance to see COG take half and then that phenomenal four-point run back yeah. uh, from Trail Mix to bring the lead and then trading, trading, trading and then a final finish by Trail Mix. What a fantastic display of ultimate, folks. Absolutely. Um, I have to be completely honest with you. I think open ultimate is probably my least favorite kind. I'm a huge fan of mixed. And then if you can't get mixed, get women's. And if you can't get women's, pff, get 
mixed a second time <laughs> and then get opens. But admittedly, um, this is what it's all about. Some fantastic athleticism and skill and great teamwork on display by these uh, young gentlemen. So fantastic work for the third stream game of our coverage of day one of the Division 2 New, uh, New Zealand Ultimate Championship Sorry, in 2024 at Bob Dean's Field. Uh, my name, as always, is Blair Munro. And I am, as always, Kelsey <laughs> Bielek. And a big thank you to, yeah, again, as Blair saying, the players for, for a fantastic game. Thank you for joining us as well. Thank you, Ulti TV. And, yeah, see you guys soon. All right. Thank you very much. Ulti.tv.